Happy weather. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Turner Podcasting Network right here on IndieQuebec.com, hosted by, of course, the Prez and my co-host, the WCW expert himself, the Stinger. Stinger, how you doing, man? It's freezing here in Montreal. Freezing. Oh, man, man, it's cold. It's uh, minus, uh, we started out, what, minus 30 almost, minus 32? Feels like, you know how it says feels like? Yeah. So it says exactly. feels like minus 32 as you woke up this crisp morning. Um, okay, you don't want to get out of bed. It's like just no, so I didn't, in bed. No, no, of course not. I was this watching. kind of weather frig, man. Man, I was watching like 1997 TVA uh, commercials. So super, super veg day like that. You know? The other day I bought ice cream. That's not going to get eaten for like two months. Dude, for real. So maybe <laughs> April. <laughs> that was a dumb, a dumb purchase. So we're gonna talk today, ladies and gentlemen, about Mayhem 2000. This was a bizarre-ish event. It was like the um, another transition time here, you know. Like um, Flair became the CEO, so uh, there's no more Russo. There's a uh, we're never gonna see Russo again in WCW from here on in. So yeah. R.I.P. Vince Russo. Yeah, yeah, Vince uh, Russo's uh, time of glories was gone. By yeah, it was the new. Uh, I think Flair was the face. Uh, you know, he was running the show and everything. So um, big difference here because we we are not going to step into the same um, Russo-ish type antics because he yeah. won't be there. So it changes completely. And no one mind that this is the second uh, mayhem, right? You had 99, which was way better. It was a sure. big event. It was big a big event. event. Toronto, by the way, Canadian city, as we mentioned on the other episode, but yeah, different of directions. And, um, I think everything changed here. Uh, you had, the uh, wrestlers feuding, like it started getting random here, I think a bit. Yeah, but like the Nitro that we that we recorded, like Russo was going for the world title there, right? Like, yeah, yeah. and then like as soon as he does that, he's gone. Yeah, yeah. I think at they're that like, time, no, man, we're not. Yeah, they're a, like no forty-year-old yeah. like New York guys. I think at the time they didn't like that, and then they're like, dude, you can't be on camera anymore. Um, we're gonna have to like just random you know not random but yeah no we don't yeah, want like, you this is on camera much, man. man so denver that's it so here we were in milwaukee wisconsin according to wikipedia this event only had 3800 people man that is small like the wwe house show that was going to come in laval had more pre-sale tickets than that already oh cool. man we had yes we had more sale that's actually um when i no when i saw it um i, I had read on it i saw the amount i was like oh my god like this is close to rinky dink like really this is close to the end uh, uh 3800 and then you have pay-per-views like survivor series going at probably like numbers. twenty thousand sold 16, out dude 17, sold out. yes back in the day you couldn't get tickets for those shows yeah. So it was a big difference here. WWF was really killing them. And Atmosphere depressing, so. for sure. Right away, as soon as the uh, the pay-per-view begins, you see the crowd always. You know, you feed off the crowd. When you have WWF uh, events at that time where you feed, you'll be like, oh, my God, can't wait. But when you saw WCW, it was kind of heartbreaking, man. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So once again, another pay-per-view just with the Thunder set. No, uh, yeah, again, plain lazy. Uh, like they were just like, okay, let's just throw on this. Like, hey, it's a nine to six shift today, so let's just throw on the that's it. Just the set, like, the it's random. just another day at the office. They're just trying to get by by the day, you know, they're trying to get the but day you, done. That's it, yeah. Like the workers <laughs> are all depressed, they're just like, we're just, we're just trying to finish our day here, and they want more money. They're like, give us more money, yeah, that's <laughs> it. That. Brother. So um, another thing that changed about Mayhem, they they changed the symbol here to like, it looks like a boat radar with a hurricane on it or something. Yeah, it looks like a hurricane, Carolina hurricane. Exactly, um, like a bit uh, like logo. the Carolina, Carolina logo. I was thinking the same thing, but in yes. blue. Yes, in blue, uh, for sure. So I always found the Carolina Hurricanes logo one of the worst NHL logos too. So like... 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. It still is. Uh, maybe the crate. No, crate can is actually nice and refresh. Yeah, I would say it's, it's okay. Really ugly. It's okay. Uh, uh, no, but the the hurricanes is horrible though. It looks oof. like a bleeding vagina. <laughs> <laughs> a blood vampiro. And they yes. made a second jersey for their twenty years, and it has two of them with a the hockey. It's oh, like does they, it? They make the worst <laughs> logos on purpose. For sure. So, um, the opening sequence. Like, even that looked cheap. Like, the text looked like it was done in, like, New Times Roman. Dude, New Times Roman, not even edited. They're like, well, well, just get it out there. Just get it out there. We got to go. <laughs> you know, seriously, That's what they're like, we like, can't pay anyone uh, overtime anymore, guys. Like, hey, just Halloween Havoc. In. Absolutely. Halloween Havoc was terrible. And then again, like, as another event comes, you're like, dude, like, you could just every uh, event in 2000 near the end it just gets worse, man. It's like being on the beach say. and just keep getting hit with that wave. Bro, exactly. That wave. Hit with another wave. Bro, until you are wave. just gone from, you know, society and um, essence itself. But for sure, man. So we start out, uh, Ric Flair comes out and he's a baby face CEO. And he's like, uh, okay, we're going to have no, no wrestlers at ringside unless they're managers um a couple yeah. other like rule changes yeah he's enforcing the the face uh you know um you know he's a commissioner i think was he the commissioner he was like the ceo uh, the ceo like, ceo sorry sorry whatever CEO, absolutely like i mean it might as so well he's be playing, the commissioner well he's a pretty much the commissioner. pretty much pretty much so he has sanders this uh, is still there as we'll see later on mike sanders he's above average he's barely passable <laughs> yeah that's it but hey I guess that's why WWE was like, you're not, you're not. Man. Good enough, man. Uh. So we had uh, Tony Schiavone, Mark Madden, Steve Stevie Ray. Ray. Stevie Again. Ray, I guess like, I don't really remember him being like a guy, like a main commentator at the end of WCW. Hey, screaming yeah. Norman Smiley. Sorry about the screaming Norman Smiley, uh, hardcore champion. Absolutely agree because he was wrestling. Uh, he was doing what? NW2000, not too long before, like really a yeah, couple yeah. of months before. So, and then out of all of a sudden, he started just doing commentary and we never saw him wrestle again, I think, right? That's or it. was nope. there once he went to save Booker from like a, I, I don't know. Yeah, I think if, that did uh, happen at one point. That happened and then that's it. We never saw uh, Stevie Ray wrestle again. So. But yeah. he was cool commentator. And they, he, they made Mike Tanay just like a com- a comedy annou- uh like interviewer. But yeah, Mike Tanay, he was always was known ju- as I, that was during Russo's era, but at this point, he's like nothing now. No, like they made him, you know, he used to be serious, Mike Tanay, uh dictionary of wrestling, uh, encyclopedia, like you press. Uh but um yeah, like they ruined him with Russo. So when he, he was just They're like, nothing by the man. end, he was done. After done. those David Flair sketches, so, like you can't come back from that. Pretty depressing, Um, this, this pay-per-view especially. The vibe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, first match we got in, it was the Cruiserweight Championship. Kwee-wee yeah, versus Mike Sanders. Mike Sanders. Kwee-wee. Yeah, definitely. That's a... Uh, a good a good cruiserweight like um i mean i think we've said it before that was like always the wcw like go to throw the cruiserweights on first yeah 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 you know because everyone wanted the action pack they're, they're like action pack cruiserweight action um it's never a bad way to start actually that's what wcw was known for i think they were trying to keep that tradition uh they started that when like i guess 90, like the nitro era like when yeah that's it 95 96 so they kept it it's, except we had a new gen and we had funnier characters than traditional yeah. classic characters yeah, like they, honestly they brought they in tried american to keep characters it, for sure but it was always uh yeah it was always good openers um also don't forget flair's promise was immediately broken exactly he yeah. literally just came out to announce something and it gets broken immediately because, yeah, because as we know come right out we get sauced again, plain souls, extra souls, like we say uh, from the natural born thrillers. Yeah. So like, I don't know, like, is this like one guy's writing one segment, another guy's writing the next, like Flair says no interference, but he doesn't know that the next guy here is like mad interference in number two. No, that's <laughs> <it, bro. laughs> A couple of swigs of uh, whiskey can do that to you. That you know? too, but, exactly. uh... <laughs> 
So um, the thrillers do like one really cool move at one point. They do like a double beal on Kiwi, throw him oh, into yes. the ring. Sanders yeah. catches him into a and power slam. That was amazing. That was uh, that was a great move. And Mike Saunders, you know, okay, we make fun of him, but he was still a good wrestler. Um, you know, In this above match, average. yeah, he, he, he showed did good, that he man. was pretty good. He, he was good. So I think like watching that, I said, okay, now I would because clownish before you know what i mean with the the, the angle he was but... always on the mic and like he would always try yeah. to like really use of the 2000s lingo dude and... <laughs> yeah okay he said biatch come on exactly. man. say that in the sec one man this is all we would say biatch when i heard that uh it was so 2000 i literally immediately looked at my girl and i said oh my god that's 2000 but i don't think she was paying attention so uh yeah for sure i was right <laughs> no she's like what the fuck are you talking about dude so <laughs> no but it really was and um so then Flair ends up coming out and he's like, get out of there. And uh, Sanders ends up winning clean. Yes, he does. Like, uh, it was no a night. I, I, no, he uses his finisher. Um, gets and that's it, it clean. Pretty much yeah, it was pretty. Uh, like, uh, he's like, fuck, fuck my yeah, life. Yeah, for real. <laughs> that was a clean, uh, like, you know, it was a clean win and Kwee was just done. Right yeah, there. like Sanders just... kind of looks strong here. Like off the bat. Backstage, we're going to have this running storyline that I find like not that interesting, but they like, it's a running storyline. Disco buys Chronic because like he can't compete in a match against the Filthy Animals. Yeah, which is Ray and Kidman. Yeah. So he hires Chronic to both replace him. Somehow that's legal. And it ends up being um, Alex Wright and Chronic. Against who Alex yeah. Wright verbally assaults Pamela Paulshock by calling her, uh, what, what was it? A dumb Super blonde, a dumb or, blonde uh, gold digger. Oh, yeah, like, gold shut digger. your mouth. I'm German. I will smack your living race. Uh, she but, says nothing know, to like, no, like, she, to, like she seemed like a gold digger, really. Or her, like, she just does there, she goes, does his job, and she always gets insulted. And gets yeah, called she's all just like, what? Like, okay, uh, hey, uh, Norman Smiley. Uh, I have the Brian Knobs and the Norman Smiley going down there in, in that room. Um, but yeah, Disco, and again, we, we see Chronic as APA and the APA vibe, except um, funny little, it's supposed to be a funny vignette where they hire them for seven minutes and 30 seconds, yeah, he's not like, more. That's what more Chronic, money. exactly, Chronic does not agree more to that. Um, so we knew that there's going to be something funny, like seven minutes with Chronic, big heavyweights, they'll slam you, they'll full Nelson you. Um, and we know, it, it, like, we I know. knew right away what's going to happen. And, and Disco, because he's a little snaky, something's bad going to happen. It's exactly. going to reverse in his face, and that's where we're going, bro. Something bad always has to happen to Disco. Like, it's like he's a funny character. For sure. So we see Evan Courageous and Jamie Noble backstage. They've formed a team. Jamie Noble is no longer Jamie San. And Evan Courageous has been kicked out of the three count. Three count. So now there are, like, three tag teams. And then Evan says that, you know, he hit a girl, um, like he hit her, um, like he tapped a girl in high school, which I think was uh, Jamie Noble's sister, possibly. Yeah, so and then Jamie's like, uh, he's like, I think he played my sister. <laughs> And, and dude, that was like what? That was super 2000. Like, dude, what is this? Like, road trip? Is this American Pie now? Like, are you, yeah. what, what's going on? Those were some great movies back in those Definitely. days. Definitely. Absolutely, dude. That's why I mentioned them because that arrow exploded. That was with, the vibe. Like, if you're going to go um, for a kind of comedy vibe. Oh, man. That was the vibe. Like, you had that. And just 2000 had the beginning of all, like, the, the, the mega leg- legendary franchises and movies bro so i mean it's the thousands yeah unfortunately not for the pay-per-views for wcw bro. no unfortunately that's it not everything could be great so it was three count versus courageous noble versus young dragons with leah meow leah meow is wearing like a plastic top it looks like she bought it at a sex shop uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you're uh, actually uh, <laughs> in the red light district style, you know. Exactly. So it was very 2000s again with the how they had valet women, especially the valets that didn't really fight much. They just there, just uh, to look good, purely just to, to look, look good, good, bro. They People, can't you know, cut a promo that well. You know, cheerleader good. style for sure, for sure. 
Yeah. So um, the dragons, uh, they interrupt courageous. Uh, no, they interrupt the uh, the three count song, of course. Yeah. And uh, this is yeah. one thing. Courageous is dressed in silver jeans. Do you remember that being a thing? I had a pair of silver jeans at one point. Dude, uh, silver jeans were everywhere, man. It was on TV, <laughs> it was in skating shows, bro. It was in games. It was in Tony Hawk, uh, PS1. Um, so, I mean, for sure. He looks like it's it, a guy like that. It fits into like to wrestling at that time, though, to like for people to look like they're dressing at the time. People in society were dressing a bit weird. Like even the pants three count were wearing like red baggy cargo pants. Yeah, yeah. But it was, I think it was like the funky explosive was. Uh, kind of trying like, to look futuristic. Yeah, man. No, but the Hardy Boys, remember? They used yeah. to dress awesomely, man. They yeah, dressed exactly. cool. They dressed grungy and like, uh, it looked like a pair of, you remember the jeans, Extremes? The really yeah, baggy Extremes, exactly. like from the 90s, bro. So for sure, big time 2000. Indeed. Yeah. So um, backstage. Uh, Bam Bam Bigelow beat up Mike Awesome. Mike Awesome. To a table. Yeah, Mike Awesome. And, like, then uh, for some reason, AWOL saves him. And then they, like, cut away from this. It, it looked like we weren't, like, supposed to, like, know what's going on, you know? It was like a, like a backstage secret, uh, secret camera kind of thing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It was like impromptu type thing. Yeah. So then um, Awesome and Bam Bam are supposed to fight later on. There's a lot of these cut to the backstage things in this show, as you can see. But none of them are that interesting. That's why it's like... Yeah, it was so bland. Like, uh, very <laughs> lackluster, I find. It was just super... Uh, like, man, WWF had it going on at that time. Like, the That's hardcore it, uh, scenes and the surprise jumpings and, uh, you know, like, all amazing. The roster uh, they were was trying... killing it. WCW was WWF sad at the end. Yeah. They just tried to copy everything with what was, or, you know, whatever was happening, the other promotion possibly, or in movies and music or whatever, you know? So it was always ripping off. The themes were ripped off, for God's sake. The yeah, themes. exactly. DDP, uh, Raven, uh, come on. Even um, Jimmy Hart, you have to blame Jimmy Hart, who's legendary. He does most uh, the voice acting in the songs. So yeah, so they some of them sound a bit cheesy because he's kind of a cheesy looking guy. So you know your music is going to represent you. That kind of makes sense, right? For sure. <laughs> so uh, Jimmy Hart gets interviewed by Mean Gene, and at this point, I found that it was like two eighties. Those two guys just together on the camera, I was like, this is. Like, no one wants to see that at this point. I'm sorry, but like... No, man, like, and Mancow, like... Uh, and dude. then, yeah, so the match ends up being Mancow. He comes out with, like... Mancow is basically some Howard Stern wannabe from Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, and, he's like, a TV show, he has uh, his own, radio show. Yeah, he on a radio show, exactly. And he has his own, like, freak guys, like Howard Stern, but, like, they're, like, not as good. They come out Rip with off. him, and he wrestles Jimmy Hart, who was, like looks like he has a broken leg this i could have done without like what the hell was the point of any of that thank god it didn't last that long but like you're really gonna waste pay-per-view time on this dude what i'm baffled is did they think that people really wanted to see this like i know you had to work with what you had but honestly would you have to put jimmy hart the mouth of the south against man cow bro who is a WCW version of what's happening in the 2000s in that era because that's all they did is copy. So they had just... And they know, always man. insisted on bringing always. celebrities. But like yes. this guy, Ta-ya. he's not even a celebrity. Like, no, dude, Man Cow. No one knows Man Cow now. We're saying Man Cow. People are like, what the fuck are yeah, these two like, talking about? This? Like, what? He's not so, even as known as like Bubba no. Bubba Love Sponge. who's like another no. copy. Of- so he beats him. Um... And I'll try to Quickly. burn that one out of my memory with many. Absolutely, dude. Cigarettes. Man cow. And what was it once? Ed Ferreira versus Medusa. That was. Oh uh, my God. That was inappropriate. That was okay. inappropriate. So, I watched the. <laughs> I watched the Nitro before this. That one. Just for fun to get some context onto this event. <laughs> and for some reason, Oklahoma came out and I was like, no. This didn't happen that late in WCW. At like, Ferreira, I thought it disappeared in the beginning of 2000s, and we never saw too. him again. Was, like early, like winter 2000s, uh, January ish, 
Like you know Some what? Of this stuff, I don't really remember weird. lasting this long. Like I don't remember no, the man. player still being um, weird, but it, obviously everything that happened before this Vince Russo era was just also even worse. Because yes, you had a better roster, I think, possibly a better roster, but like really not used properly at all. Remember, yeah. you had the NW two thousand. And guys not anyways. caring. And, and again, it carried on to now. Well, the event we're talking, no one gave a shit. Oh yeah, we'll see. The classic number one guy not giving a shit, give less of a shit than ever later on in this show. Mike Awesome, we go back to backstage, right? So Mike Awesome got put on a stretcher. You have Daddy Crowbar. So Crowbar is a pimp, I forgot. He's yeah, that one, I totally forgot about that too. Crowbar you changed know. gimmick into a pimp. See, that's another guy. I don't, I, I don't remember Crowbar even being in WCW at this time. Uh, I do. I do. Crowbar was, man, I see him all the time on Thunder. So I, I do, thought he like, I do left, remember. No. I thought he no, like, me too. Me too. Because it was weird. Uh, after a certain while, you only had the same roster competing all the time, like for months, right? Yeah, yeah. It was always them on pay-per-view. Like, dude, the last pay-per-view event, all those wrestlers probably wrestled. Yeah, like New Blood Rising and Halloween Havoc, it felt like the same roster. Dude, it's the same roster again. So, uh, but we are delving into the different changes now. Like now, it's about now the it's changing. changing a bit, as yes, we said. So, so yeah, yeah. for sure. So we got Pimp Crowbar. He looks ridiculous. Super ridiculous. And um, then you see, yeah, like a seventies pimp. Yeah, with a cane, with a cane. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> so then we get like Ray and Kidman giving a promo backstage, which. They needed Conan or something because those two together giving a promo. Was <laughs> it was very cringe. I love both, by the way. Yeah, they're Ray, just like, you know, they're we're going to win tonight, my, guys. Yeah, they're just like, no effort, man. You know, like, uh, we're going to do this match and then I, I'm going to this big party in, uh, in, in Wisconsin, you know. With some it's people, like, I'm going to do a couple flips. It's going to be cool. Wait uh, for the match. Be done. That's it. That's it. So then we get a hardcore match. Okay. Big Vito versus Reno versus Crowbar. How come... The only, like, Big Vito, his only feud in WCW is against Reno. It's... <laughs> what, are they brothers? Are we to the point now? Like, what, we're, they're brothers, no? Uh, so they're... At one point, backstage, was it on this or was it... A... Okay, there's, like, a one of their sister, I think Reno's sister, Marie. Yes, super Jersey Shore style, dude. It yeah, was so but hey, this Jersey was before Shore. Jersey Shore. Dude, this is like real. This is where it originated, Jersey Shore. Oh, but, yeah, okay, but not only like that, but also Canyon and DDP Jersey Triad. They had a lot of like. Yeah, there was a lot of New Jersey down there. They're like, we're from New Jersey, and ninety. This started in ninety nine. That's a good Bam Bam. That was man. These these guys were real heels. They're like, yo, we're from NJ. Like we don't play around. So it was Bigelow, Canyon, and DDP. They used to feud, I think, with Saturn and uh, and Benoit and Benoit, Goku, yeah. Belanco. Um, so yeah, no, <laughs> that was uh, good. That was not bad, honestly, compared to this. So yeah, like, but like you said, Big Vito, uh, it had that Italian connection. Like these guys are beefing over the clans, you know. Yeah. Uh, no, no pun intended. The guys is just joke. Uh, but I mean, this is what was they got Disco there. Inferno involved at first. Yeah, uh, with the uh, Marinera, Tony Mam. No, yeah, it was a Tony Marinera. Yeah, he owed exactly. him money. Yeah, sure. I think it was it was Mayhem '99. Remember, he owed him money. Yeah, exactly. And I think but Medusa this is hung out with Kidman. going on a year later. They're still yeah, feuding. like they're still feuding like this. Like, this is uh, still like the continuation of that feud. Yes, yes. Oh shit, that's Basically, actually that's... true, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> For a year, they've been carrying that, but in different layers and like transformation. They're like, well, we're still here. We're still feuding. No, but that's shit. the thing. That's why I don't remember this feud lasting this long. And like, why make this feud last this long? Good like, point. there's no titles in the line. Give these guys something Point. else to do. Like it's like yeah, yeah, for real. Do, they're they're like, overworking them. They're like Evan. Evan is gonna go into the. He's gonna replace me today. I just can't come. So this is how it was in WSW. And he's like the new guy is gonna go in and he'll do uh, twice as much hours because I am. He's the new you know, guy. He needs the. I'm hour. a mil- I'm a millionaires club. Okay, so like new new blood and millionaires club was truly going. It was like on. a shoot kind of. It, it was, was like a shoot, true. dude. <laughs> So, uh, not bad match, honestly. I know they were, uh, we laughed, they but tried to make uh, it okay. they tried, man. You know, I, I got to give it to them for sure because they were good wrestlers too. I like Big Vito, uh, you know, Reno, uh, Crowbar, Reno great wrestlers. Reno could have gotten like a shot later. In dude, yeah, he was intimidating looking. He looked like he was from Mortal Kombat or something, dude. 
with that like or like a bouncer at a strip club or something dude or a character <laughs> from street fighter or all of these yeah he's like yeah, dude i work at street fighter and time. all of the above <laughs> <laughs> The cat backstage says if he loses to the franchise, he's going to kiss his feet and leave the country for 30 days. Like, what kind of weird stipulation is that? So you, you knew Russo was there somehow, not it's physically, like, maybe. This was like a leftover storyline <laughs> or something. Listen. Yeah, you know, I think I think Russo right there uh, left. No, like, that's probably. the thing I was thinking, too. Like, there's This was in the archives, maybe. Here. Yeah, it's from, from Russo, bro. Come on. They probably had some they ideas and they're like, like Disco Inferno and Ed Ferrara. They're like, you guys figure it out. We're like, <laughs> they're like, it's okay, like a we ship don't want with no captain at this point. Just like, they're like, we're not going to hurt their feelings. So we're just going to let them come on. That's what probably <laughs> happened. It's like, what? <laughs> or WCW. So, so, the, uh, so then we get that, finally get to that match. The, uh, the cat. Oh no, not the cat. That was earlier. Filthy animals. Which We're back to them. Ray and Kidman. At this point, I don't know what happened to Conan or any of the um, other ones. He took some time off, bro. They all took time off. They're like, I'm, I'll be back in three months. And then and they're, they're like, like oh, I'm still okay. getting paid? Cool. And they're like, but sir, um, we 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 wrote you in for the next few months. Like, oh, I don't care, man. I'm not going to be there for three months. And then they're like, okay, we'll just get Evan to go in. <laughs> so... That's it. So, like, yeah, so they're just a, basically a tag team now, basically called the Filthy Animals. Ray and Kidman, which they're a great team together, actually. Um, they are. Honestly, they, they were my favorite Alex, at that point, yeah. Yeah, no, they were really cool, for sure. Yeah, awesome, man. They're great wrestlers. Um, so they're going up against Alex Wright and, and Chronic. Chronic. Which is like, okay, the main event of the pay-per-view last month Chronic was in the main event. Now versus they're... Goldberg, and now they're like third match. They're right, in like some, you know, they weren't even advertised. Like anyone who was buying this pay per view was like, I guess Chronic's not booked. Yeah, for real. But they were in the third match, not the main event. Like you Dealing know, with previously, Alex Wright. Alex Wright on top of it, and the most ridiculous storyline, dude. You went from wrestling goal, anyways. Yeah, it was so all over like, the place. But fuck, like man. you, um, so. Uh, Good match. I find I that's find, just weak. Like it's like that's just. It weak. was. It was. It I was. Mean, so that's why it was really a mess. Can be, it's for sure, like, it was a mess. It was a mess. Like the match was good, you know, for sure because of um, Kidman, Mysterio, and Chronic. Uh, obviously, they were decent. Basically, but, uh, it was just all over the place, dude. You knew. You knew. Like watching it, you're like, dude. No, actually, at the time, I thought it was crap. Like I still watch WWF more, but now looking at it, I'm like, holy man, they had problems doing the show like the set sucks uh, they wouldn't sell out people would just show up and force themselves to finish the shift or yeah, everything like was thrown it's... together last minute bro honestly um you could tell many times the commentators super professional but they look like they wanted to give up many times bro they're like what the fuck yeah they're not into on? it they're like, like dude you know and you can tell who's into it it's like selling a product dude anyways well, but sure. it was getting it you was can tell if the guys into way it. way you like can't really fake it you out of control man for sure for sure but it just even like the... tony shivani has even said on his podcast like by the end of wcw he was like not even he was just basically like doing it for right him. right you had tigress sitting with uh stevie yeah. ray she and, was kind uh, of funny on commentary she was pretty funny like, she was very and yeah, she she's very that. California style, you know, like, you know, straight from Cali, don't play around, you know, like, um, she but... reminded me of a, maybe a character from the movie Next Friday, which was Next... very popular in 2000. Bro, 2000, come on, man, first one, 95, the second, 2000. I remember it people next... saying, like, it's just as good as the first. Or uh, absolutely good. not, but it was pretty good. It was but pretty absolutely good. No Chris not, Tucker, but... It was... but... It needed for sure, uh, for sure. No, but day it was day. fucking funny though. It was hilarious, bro. <laughs> Debo came back. Uh, you know, Sticky Fingers was in it, so it was, it was a huge. The guy with time, his dog bro. and the, the Mexican that, guy left. Like, funny, this my dog. Yeah, is <laughs> he's like, yo, what's up? Um, but uh, funny to say, that was one of the first movies I rented on DVD. Oh. And the DVD I just got in literally from Zellers was, was on special, bro, for forty nine ninety nine. That was still expensive. That is back in the they're like on special to, uh, 49.99 special uh, it was costing like 99 dollars before no though. that's it yeah, back yeah, in yeah. The good days dvds man that was like basically the transition around this time yeah there wasn't many 
wrestling DVDs. You no. had to go, you had to actually order them from the magazines or online, the site like WCW.com or the magazines. You'd get like the best of uh, Goldberg or, yeah. um, remember those ones? Staying Dude, the there man was with like the... a, a transition between VHS and DVD for wrestling. Yeah, but you and had like, both. I couldn't Dude. find wrestling. I just stopped buying, I didn't buy wrestling like videos. No. Between like maybe like it was hard. Thousand, probably. I would still buy VHS a bit because you could find I would still try to find the rare ones, but the DVDs, I would find some at like 30 bucks. And like it seemed for a while they didn't make any. And no, then, but yeah, you I had more on VHS finding them again in like 2005 i started finding them a lot more yeah then they started making more They're, they got more into digital by 2005 uh remember hmv downtown guys everyone HMV. yeah exactly like they used to, I used to find like good the, the john cena yeah. era I would that's say. it so 2006 ish and seven so like it was uh easy to find now they started making more uh you know the legends of and things like that and then not too long after uh wwe network no wwe network came out in like 2014 they had, yeah but before that they had like on demand which was yeah like, they did they did had on demand con- it was uh, weird. content that's if you right. had uh, the black box you could see sure. it it was like black box <laughs> you put the card in and you change the card every three months don't ask me how i know sources tell me that's it and like sometimes it would just shut off for like five months or like we don't have any codes it's like okay i guess i gotta just not have tv for sure then if you call cable then they're like you got to sign up for a year and then you're like but what happens you know this was for sure this was a problem at the time absolutely problematic um so um kidman and ray actually fend off chronic for the yeah. duration and, and it's a good wrestling match it's a good match i saw uh, good moves uh, well, then, you had yeah, power after versus, seven minutes and 30 after seven minutes dude you know uh, chronic was no selling a lot of um, the filthy animals but by the end you know filthy um kept them off and uh boogie nights uh that's wonderkin uh got beat down yeah then he just the once animals. chronic leaves he just gets beat down by filthy animals and they win he was done. Uh, the match itself wasn't bad. The booking was very, very odd. Strange. No, exactly. It Rather. was. It felt like a, a nitro match, but um, it wasn't that bad. So yeah, uh, so far in the show, at the beginning, as you can see, we've seen a lot of cruiserweights. Not only like in the yes. first match, but like you know, even in yes. this match with Ray and yes, Kidman. Yes. Um, and even then the, the triple threat tag, so yes, and we see more later, absolutely. Well, no, remember, they, they, later, they, yeah. they even make a belt, uh, if you remember, where they, they make like a tag team, yeah. No, so it became huge the tag team cruiserweight that was like one of the last WCW that was the last, lines. yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. So they 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 were building like they were going towards that route, they were like, okay, yeah. let's really when push WCW the WCW closed, they were like in the middle of storylines. It wasn't yeah, exactly. like they made no. storylines like we're get, we're all closing. No, no, no. It was still like it was live up. So. There was even some guys. I think Kid Cash. He wrestled for his first ever WCW match was on the last ever Thunder. So it's Kid like Cat. there's still new guys showing up on the last day. Yes, exactly. So yes, like, Kid Cash. I remember it was a, a good, entertaining match. Like he was good. He came in and he was super amazing. I remember. I just saw that maybe because there's the last, last ever Nitro, Nitro That's which true. everyone remembers. Panama City, yeah. But there was a Thunder after that. There was. Oh yes, so and it was the last week at WCW. Exactly. True. You they had still the last Nitro. Off the last week, they still did. And the then last you had a, and then you had a Thunder on Thursday or a Wednesday, yeah. if I'm correct. Yes, that's true, yeah. man. You we'll are review definitely that at one right. point for sure. Absolutely. The hidden thunder. Yeah, exactly. Like it. no one remembers that. Everyone thinks that the last WCW show was that that nitro, but it really wasn't. There's some that's good it. info for you fans out there. Um so, backstage, we get another unnecessary segment with Mike Sanders promised his boys, you know, the crew that he's gonna set it off, whatever that meant. Set it off was another movie with yeah, like Queen he's, Latina. He's always Queen talking Latifa. like that. It's like yeah, who is you know, this he's like, guy. He's dude, he's giving puns from like uh, movie uh, tagline posters, probably, dude. Like, yeah, like, so uh, like set it off. He's writing uh what do they say in like American Pie? Like like those yeah. movies you're just talking about. Dude, he's just randomly spewing uh, titles or like taglines. Uh, anyway, well, so at the super time, unnecessary. Everyone considered him really good on the mic, though. 
Absolutely. And then right after that, we cut to Mean Gene interviewing our boy, our one of our personal favorites, Scott Steiner and um, Medaja. And, you know, she's just his, what was it? Um, best freak? Yeah. His, I think uh, Mark yeah. Madden said, like, his best freak. Um, and he's just getting crazier and crazier. Like, you can see the testosterone kicking in um, with, with Scott, man. So yeah, they were really building like, him as a powerhouse, bro. It, like, he was... It's, like, legit that he's crazy. On the it is, day. man. So, like, I knew that at the time, too. I was like, yeah, I had read an article about him really and raging. Even when we'd watch him on, like, Nitro, would be like, did you see dude. how crazy he was going? Yeah, yeah like, like, dude, he would foam from the mouth. Uh, <laughs> like, a guy who worked in uh, Bois de Vie, not far here. That's another story. But he, every time he was angry, he would just foam from the mouth. <laughs> Gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Downtown Montreal, guys, is rough when you go to Bois oh, de Vie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, that was back in the day it's another story but um yeah dude he was crazy he was out of control and they were building him as this um the guy who beat superman which was goldberg right he was psycho he had his but he was still feuding booker t which was good i like that feud yeah. because you had the two of the um you know these were the right guys to push i think it was nice not to see jared going for the title anymore oh, i don't yeah. know if at the time i didn't like him i was relieved not to see slap nuts perform for you know like um for the belt it seemed it was too the... much of him do you think scott steiner intimidated him backstage <laughs> i don't He's know just like it's my shot dude like i'll you know after what he did to ddp it's possible uh, backstage. but at the same time i'm pretty sure that jeff jarrett's dad gave scott steiner his first ever job in wrestling so scott steiner might really like jeff jarrett actually like they might be boys Oh, okay. Yes. No, that makes sense, man. Because Jerry, guys, Jerry Jarrett was a definite legend behind the a lot, scenes. A lot of guys like um, Stone broken. Cold hates Jeff Jarrett apparently because his dad was like didn't pay him well. Yeah, yeah. In and in though in Memphis. Yeah, but absolutely. Some guys I've heard that. It. Like Steiner was there at a good time in like 1988. Wow, makes sense. Makes so sense. It's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. So I don't know if they were friends. For sure, they were both members of the shitty NWO revival. That's it. Probably. I I think you're right. I think they might have been friends for sure, bro. I it's mean, possible. because you just you just saw Jeff like drift away from the title scene. Like yeah. Well, I mean, we, Buff I Bagwell. Think I think yeah. So like had seen enough of Jared. I know personally. I hated him at the time. Yeah, because dude, we saw him really like uh, in, from NW NW two thousand times when Bret Hart was champion. Remember? You that know who last... I hate less? I hate him less watching these back though. I hate him less on these shows than Kevin Nash because at least Jeff Jarrett is trying to have a good match. Kevin Nash is just a lazy. Yeah, punk. you know he's lazy, dude. He, <laughs> he knows that he's a legend already, and he's like, I don't gotta work anymore. He's like, like, I'm, I'm getting just paid badass. like 50k just to show. Yeah, he's here. like, I don't care, man. He's like, I'm gonna put my sweater, uh, my my jersey, and my sweater on. My funny. I know brown the fans shoes. are just gonna cheer. All he does is put his hands up, and the fans. Yeah, cheer. he puts his hands up, dude. And uh, remember, once I really, I saw how lazy he was, dude. He came in this random brown boots with like jeans, baggy jeans, and like some weird. Um, he didn't even try to put on like sleeve. nice clothes. It's just no, like dude. some clothes he, he, he looked, was wearing at home. He looked, like, oh, yeah, dude, he looked, he looked like he just fell asleep on this couch, bro. And he's like, oh, I'm <laughs> going to go like this. You know, he's like, oh, I have a show in fucking an hour. Um, anyway, so we see, we see Steiner get crazy. And then he choose to Shane Douglas versus Ernest the Cat Miller. So these guys are still feuding. Yeah. Um, the, cat, getting... the cat and uh, and the franchise, at what they show like... Uh, more clips of what, of course, the franchise beating up more women. Yeah, man. So up, uh, Miss Jones. And Tori Wilson looks comfortable with him. She's like, yeah, he'll like, beat any girl's ass. She's like, and he's always he like, me. like, yeah, now, exactly. You know, so very odd, like with him always obsessed with assault. Was that his, uh, do you think that was his gimmick? Like he I just likes so. to assault women, dude. <laughs> And I think they even knew then. They're like, we're not going to say it from our mouths that that's what he's doing, but just we'll just let him, him do, do it. it. He just so happens to like get in feuds with like these women are around. Uh, or... That's why I didn't like him at the time. Other than that, he was great talent. You know, he uh, he was good heel. The blonde you know hair for sure. Sad, sold though? I was thinking about it. Okay. Big time wrestling fans will think of Shane Douglas like, oh, like his great time in ECW. But like, this was probably his most experienced like his biggest time in all of wrestling yeah yeah he was like, like his biggest weird. push because he was he always on pay-per-views yeah. he was on the he was, night he was shows all the time 
Douglas Champ. Uh, they gave him Tory Wilson as a valet. Because in uh, WWF, you know, he just never he never got this long of a no, high run. No, 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 no. He deserved it, I think. Because so man, was he's like also, his best era, really. Dude, he was a veteran. He came from uh, like ECW. ECW. He started on ECW. So to me, he, now I would think he's a veteran, even though they never gave him the time. He had it, like he had it in him. So to me, he. You know, but he's too bad they never gave him. He's yes. one of these guys, like we're saying. Absolutely. It's like, where's Absolutely. the franchise? He's going to be on pay-per-view. That's it. So we saw Ms. Jones, uh, Tori mixing it up as well. Ms. Jones, remember? Uh, yeah, exactly. Nitro Girl there. Uh, what was franchise it? Franchise punches her. I don't know. Yeah, like again, he always assaults them. They all them. had some kind of stripper names. Uh, the match was okay. Super blah. Uh, Cat wins. Uh, nothing special, honestly. I'm just skipping through this because it was yeah, just uh, cat wins. nothing special. It was just a cat wins. Um, and then we what so we it, cut to Jeff Jarrett, uh, and his guitar is smashed all yeah, over. Yeah, and he's like, "Damn, floor. my guitar is like." And then he's like, "Who did this?" He's looking for uh, whoever broke his guitars. Uh, someone pranking him or some Trying weird shit his, like that, uh, dude. Like, what guitar. kind of weird is that? Like, I understand, like, yo, who who peaked in my girl? And this is like, yo, this is another, like, like they have weird. on running storylines throughout the show, but they're not interesting. Like, I don't think anyone gives a shit who smashed his guitars. Like, it's not something that, like, you have to make a second segment about. Like, no one gives a shit either way. Yeah, like, we don't want to see him, first of all. That's so it. It's we like, don't want to give a shit about his guitars. The character. That's it. Exactly. So that whole mess, someone says Buff Bagwell, so there's a rumor now that's Buff. And they're going to fight uh, later on. So. And they're going to fight later on. Uh, then we see our, uh, our wonderful and lovely Pamela Paulshock, who um, interviews General Rection. She was professional, I find, and they, they were just so mean to her. But Rection was a... Um, face so he 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 didn't disrespect her yeah for sure um so he's super fired up yeah they're trying um, to go like a bit more aggressive version of yes resistance. yes he's super aggressive fired up uh with his final match with storm um also gets a big pop mr rash lash larue is getting again more time uh than, than we thought he would get calling major guns a bitch so again they're super inappropriate they're calling women bitches again. So 2000. And they're trying remember, to look yeah. like more edgy. Yeah, they were lenient, but like, dude, you know, like this is just being vulgar, by yeah, the like way. For no like, reason. Like, come on. Like, for, <laughs> you know, it's not even part of an intense storyline. So you're just like, bitch, <laughs> bitch, you know, so, so um, like, kind of silly, yeah. but it was 2000s. So. so we get a Bam Bam Bigelow. He's supposed to fight Mike Awesome. Like, I don't remember Bam Bam Bigelow that much coming back. At the, like, I uh, guess no, I no. Uh, I guess now when I saw it, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, it's true. He does come back near the end or somehow. We, we see him a couple of more times, which, by the way, is a superhero, this guy. He saved, uh, I think, a child. In a burning house. Children in a he burning ran into house. a burning house. It's yeah, crazy. So crazy. Rest in peace, uh, oh, yeah. superhero. But he was a good heel. It was Bam Bam Bigelow, bro. Come on. A cool uh, character. Always a cool great character. character. You know what uh, I always was thinking? Imagine if he would have been in the Attitude Era of WWF. They could have like remade him into some kind of dude. Great he would have became one of the biggest like power heels. He would have been for sure. Give him know? a new suit, like Absolutely. not so cartoonish, dude. but make him like a fucking biker or something. I don't know. Well, maybe he, maybe he wasn't serious. So they're like, we're just gonna use him as a big goon, which they did. Or here. like, so remember he's... how they brought back Boss Man, and he yes. was like, I think they could have brought back. Bam Bam in that way too a bit. Boss Man in 99, right? They brought yeah, him in exactly. 98, 99. Uh, and he was more of a serious boss man. He wasn't that silly, like and uh, he all his... security guard. Exactly, yeah. And then his boy Nails, who got sexually uh, harassed. Here's Vince McMahon of trying to give him a blowjob or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Which was proven not guilty or thrown out of court because they're like, no way. <laughs> They're like, oh my god, I, we're not even gonna talk. So, um, Bam Bam Miggles, two heavyweights. Uh, it was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, so they're... Mike Awesome, like it was supposed to be Mike Awesome against Bam Bam, but but he got stretchered out. Yeah, Bam Bam took out Mike Awesome. So then A Wall fights Mike Awesome, but like it's not a hardcore match. I I I don't know. I thought it was going to be dude it was it was dull uh, it was a bit good but it was dull and a bit lifeless like yeah you yeah. had a wall and and bam bam but it was a bit dull you know what it but... felt like to me though like like a wwf 1990 pay-per-view between like two really roided guys like but like the slow roided like, guys like 
fucking Hercules warlords versus, against Hercules. Versus, exactly. Yeah, exactly. dude. Like, oh my god. And uh, Madison Square Garden for sure. Like, oh, he hit a that, side slam. Like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah, he had that ninety-two Jack Tunney. Um, but for sure, man. Yeah, they, like they, a they slow were. big guy match, you know. Super slow. After seeing um, all those cruiserweights, this was kind of like shitty. It was. Dude, kind of they even you realized they even uh, they brought out a table. They didn't okay, even but use it exactly. It that. was so boring. They like bring, yeah, uh, oh, Bam Bam, they this is boring. like fucking weird. And I looked it up. Oh no. Okay, forget it. Okay, I'll explain it. Okay, so Bam Bam wins, and then he pretends like he's hurt. So they bring out a stretcher, and then, then. Landstorm against General Rection starts, and Bam Bam's being like carted out, but then he actually wasn't hurt and he was just pretending, and then he jumps on yeah, Rection. Yeah, so and then that, he comes like, out to no jump Rection. No interference rule is broken again. Always broken, dude. Like, um, Flair What's came out. I don't even know what's the point. With, like, oh, like, it's not going to follow it, too. And you like, got to find like stupid ways to like. <laughs> That was so stupid, but I mean, yeah, they should have just not got him to come out and say anything at all, dude. It would just been better. Like it would have been like, oh, okay, let the boys. Be. The They're like, boys may be boys. This is what they do all the time. So that's what it was happening. Again, super pointless. Totally agree. So all over the place, unorganized, like usual. Um, then we had cervical dicks, as we say, backstage above Bagwell. Uh, he's but wait, yeah, like so, a... but wait, Rexon won that match though. Yes, Finally, sorry, uh... it was just so uh, like mm, no, that's it. Honestly, this, this so... match, like it was, I guess, like the end of their fucking long ass feud. Bullshit, um, feud. like we got, we got in, like it was just bo- like, dude, we had enough. Yeah, that, and this like, was just... like finally like a, a, a straight one on one match though, instead of all the interference, the matches we had seen them have before. Erection, yeah, like I don't know. I was more of a fan of Lance Storm, and yeah, I think Lance did good in the match. Finally, we see right, right, right. like um, right. high flying and shit, which yeah. was really good. That's it, and um, yeah, so they, yeah, they, they were feuding quite a long time. We'll go back and forth. Lance Storm got the push, uh, eventually, Rection caught up to him, but um, yeah, anyways, so uh, Rection, Rection wins. So uh, our next match, um, Jeff Jarrett against Buff Bagwell. This, I felt like it was like, these two guys are so representative of this era of WCW. Like, yeah, Buff they were Bagwell always on the pay-per-view. And Jeff Jarrett. And they were two guys that you love to hate. Yeah. Like you just love to hate. Doesn't it feel, though, a bit on this pay-per-view? It's like, it's just the guys who are always on pay-per-view taking turns fighting each other. It's like, well, Buff never fought Jeff. Like, got to make them up. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're like, yo, we're going to have to do all the combinations possible of who's going to fight who or yeah. who's going to wrestle. So Buff so. is like, I broke all your guitars. Now you can't use one. So then Jared comes out and cuts a promo on Minnesota making fun of them. And then so, you know what? It wasn't that bad of a match, but it was like, Okay, I don't know. Nothing that special. I th- I think Jarrett was a bit better than Buff. Buff, I don't know. Just didn't Buff, do it for me. Buff as a always had face. it. He always as had it. Face, but Jeff like, Jarrett, yeah. yeah. But that, but don't forget, Jeff Jarrett was already seasoned that, then because he oh, yeah, held the sure. heavyweight championship, feuded with big names. And I don't mind staying. seeing Jarrett yeah. in these kind of matches where he's yeah, yeah, for going sure. for the title. If he's it's not more... going for the title, it's not that bad. No, exactly, exactly. With Mike Awesome as well, I uh, enjoyed. So, um, but Buff was weird because, like, you knew he was supposed to become something. Like, you were like, he had the body, he had yeah. everything, he, but you know, he had, the, he could wrestle. And we're uh, looking but... like, who else would be the next big baby face to step up? Like, we have Booker T stepping up. It looked yeah. like Buff was like the next guy to get like a title run. Right, 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 right. Um, we never so, got to see yeah, that, but maybe if WCW continued, he would have, though, you know? Uh, yeah, for sure. Possibly, actually. The, who knows? Um, yeah, but again, the match, just uh, uh, your typical pulls out the, the guitar, yeah. hits him with Somehow, it. Somehow, like, the and... ref doesn't see him hit him with the guitar. No. He had another guitar. Like usual, dude. Thing. Like, that's like, another thing. Like, okay, the chronic thing. Like, I think it was cartoony. pretty damn obvious what was going to happen. And I thought it was pretty damn obvious. That he was gonna somehow find another guitar. I mean, 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. They're just silly, to be honest. So, like, they build up these things, but, like, there's no surprise. It's like you can already predict what's going to happen. So it's like whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah, like mystery is done uh, by the midway of, of the storyline. It's like point, if someone so... tells you, like, hey, we're going to have a really good dessert tonight, and then it ends up being chocolate cake which is maybe your favorite and you're like, yay, that's the best. That is even like better than like someone who's like, we're going to have chocolate cake tonight. You're like, okay, we're going to have chocolate cake tonight. Absolutely, you're not that excited. Man. You're like, yeah, you're like, oh, it. nice chocolate cake. It's nice. Uh, sometimes I answer my wife like that and she gets mad. She's like, I put all the effort and this is how you talk. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I can relate. So basically backstage, we get this, um, another video it's um showing um then we get a montage uh ddp and nash become the insiders because the uh okay like, so i forgot it, i forgot it came like they came back around this time it was from havoc and on like i remember i think ddp came out of nowhere he said i have my tag partner and it no, was a Nash. surprise tag Nash Yeah, it was like, Nash. It was Nash. Because who brought like, Nash is heel. On the Nitro that we reviewed, Nash was heel. He, he was. Um, well, he was always heel. And then uh, he goes and like he's trying to coach the thrillers with that stupid uh, chalkboard stuff. Yeah. And then they turn on him, which kind of turns him into face. Right. And then he brings back his partner, which ends up being DDP. DDP. And instead of the outsiders, they're the insiders. Yeah. So he brought another legend, you know, millionaire and club. That's one Remember. thing we were saying on the last pay-per-view. Like, we needed, like, you can't have a guy like DDP under contract and not have him on the show. No, true. For sure. You know? For sure. So DDP, um, so it's those two against Palumbo and Stasiak. Everyone in the crowd was chanting, we want Hall. Yeah, we want exactly. Hall. I wrote we want down Hall. the same thing in my. I head. remember, yeah, I remember. We want Hall. Um, it was, uh, yeah, the, a lot at that time. Remember, they used to tease us where Hall would come back. Well, it's because I think it the Nash was trying to make it. They tried to make it seem like he was bringing him back, but then it yeah, ended yeah. up being DDP. A DDP was probably the bigger star, but people sure. loved the Outsiders as a team. For sure, for sure, for sure. But DDP was the bigger star. Yeah. So in this match, okay, DDP does a great job. He takes, uh, Nash starts out in a bit in the beginning, gives a bit of offense, tags into DDP, DDP takes a beating, and then Nash comes back in. Nash hits two power bombs. Um, like the other thrillers, again, there's more outside. There's like three matches with outside interference in this show. Flair is not so, even paying attention, bro. He that just made went no damn nothing. sense. But okay, seriously, in this whole match, Kevin Nash takes no bumps at all. He doesn't. He doesn't fall to the mat once. He doesn't. True. Dude, he's like he was lazy. Yeah. Wrestler yeah, yeah. He I've looked so seen. lazy. I realized that he took no bump. Didn't DDP even fall once. Does all the work in the match for the team. I'm sure he wrote that match. I'm sure Nash wrote his match. And DDP is like, I guess, like, he's like, all right, bro, we're boys. You know, we're getting paid mad cash. You know, because yeah, DDP still, was like, always fit. Even if he was my lazy. boy, I wouldn't yeah, I like go to work with you and be like, hey, we're boys. I'm gonna like do all your work while you fucking do nothing. No, I agree, bro. I agree <laughs> for sure. I agree, but. I think they were just, you know, he's like, yo, uh, Diamond, I don't feel good, bro. He looks, this this is what we're going to do. And Diamond is a fit guy. He's a, he's no, a nice guy, right? Mentioned. So he's probably like, all right, shit. brother, I'll, I'll do it for you. You know, like, uh, uh, okay, this is how the match is going to be. He's like, yeah, bro, you know, I don't feel good. I got into a fight with the wife. Bullshit, probably, bro. Come on. So why oh, would exactly. he just come in? He's so fucking lazy, man. You know it, bro. Come on. And Nash was very influential. So he'd just be like, bro, come on. You know, let's do this. Yeah. And DDP no, didn't it. see it. At this point, like it was that. like, probably, I think it was chaos after Vince mm -hmm. Russo man, left in the end. Dude, no one wanted to do, like, it's a company. Don't forget. Disco Inferno the was literally on the writing staff. So yes. Like, so like that explains point, a lot. But at one man. point in WCW, he was. It was just a mess, bro. So we get to the semi-main event. Lex Luger against Goldberg. And you know what? I had low expectations for this one. After this last match, because I must say, for as much as DDP did for that match, like, I hate, I didn't like that last match that much. And I thought, I always preferred 
O'Hare and Palumbo. I mean, uh, O'Hare and um, O'Hare Jindrak. and Jindrak, exactly. I wasn't that much of a fan of Palumbo and Stasiak. No, no, the perfect players. event. I don't. I didn't. Uh, I like the. I like the two other guys, dude. They were exactly huge uh, cruiserweight heavyweights. You know, they yeah. were cruiserweight heavyweights. Bro. Yeah, they like, were like a new kind of style of wrestler. Yeah, yeah, dude. So, so I, didn't, I, like I wasn't them. a fan of that last match. So this match, I was like, oh, I'm starting to feel like this pay per view is feeling long with these two. But you know what? It actually turned out not that bad, surprisingly. No, it was good, clean wrestling. It was a power, you know, good, clean power wrestling. Lex Luger, they huge icon. So over. big, man. Absolutely. And they were chiseled. And it, it just looked like a good, old school, clean, you know. And I thought in uh, this match, like, Luger would look like an old, like like a T1000, T100 uh, compared to a T1000 kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yes. Like yes, an old generation bulky. of the same kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luger he was more bulky. He was and, fucking uh, bigger, man. He was, dude. He was uh, bulky as hell, dude. He was on a hell of a cycle at that time. Oh, fucking this right, was a man. bit before he got sick and star, you know, yeah. and uh, Liz's death, I think, and all that. This was, I think, a bit before. So he was in his peak physical, but, uh, you know, he had to be paid a price, bro. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. Story. It's but, unfortunate. Um, you know. Yeah, they put on a good match here. And here's one thing. Like one of the few things that WCW had at the time over WWF, WWF it was still at the time. WWF didn't have any main eventers that were as jacked as these guys. Right. No, no, no. These guys were like WCW, bro. Come on. You had Papa Pump. You had these guys were jacked as hell. And no one asked questions. Chronic, they were, dude. They had veins, man, just coming out of their shoulders. You were just. Brian Clark. Uh, yeah, so yeah, if you wanted to dude. see like the ultra jacked guys, you go watch WCW. Sean Stasiak, yeah, man, like the dude. Palumbo even some of their too. guys on like WCW Saturday Night would be like straight rip. Yeah, huge. Like huge Mike Enos, but like you never see Mike, Mike Enos was huge, yeah, jacked. dude. And Kenny, uh, what's his name? Kenny, Kenny uh, Chaos. The guy was Kenny like Chaos as big as like Jack, him. dude. Rhino almost, fuck. He was, uh, no, that's it, no, Rhino's man. very wide, but like, yeah, Kenny, yeah, for sure, bro. They did so have a lot of like, bodybuilders. Uh, almost as big as like Buff or someone, you know? Yeah. Uh, the, cl- the crowd was a bit silent at some point. It's kind of sad because, you know, Goldberg and Luger are, are wrestling. Like, those are two heavyweight yeah, icons, yeah. right? At one so point, it was, uh, it was silent. yeah, I know, that really, match. I guess they, I appreciated it. They weren't in a big room. Maybe like, I mean, they were in a big room. It wasn't a big crowd. Maybe like the crowd didn't seem that into it all all the way throughout the show. No, no. Maybe they were getting burnt out from what I was saying. Probably. Before, like, dude. They're probably like, ugh, uh, like they're like, what time is this ending? That's it. But this match was good. I must say I was impressed. This was one of the better Goldberg matches I've seen. To be honest. Yeah. Because normally Luger can have a good match with a guy like Flair or Brett who's a good wrestler. Right. But he's not known for having great matches. No, no. Goldberg, no, same thing. He wasn't. These yeah, two exactly. somehow together had a pretty good match. That's I was true. pretty impressed. To be honest. Yeah. So uh, Goldberg wins with the jackhammer. He's um, trying to build back from that, that loss from Scott Steiner. You know, at, yes. the, at Fall Brawl. Yeah, like, fall uh, brawl, bro, because Scott Steiner looked like the bigger, yeah, he defeated Superman, you know, like the That's Superman it. was defeated, so he, he had to come back, and uh, yeah, it was a good win for him, Lex yeah. Luger, man. And Steiner, sure. so building off that Goldberg win a couple months back, they've been building him up, building him up, building him up, here he is against Booker T in the world title in, in a straight jacket, a straight jacket cage, cage match. match, which it was like a Hell in the Cell style cage. And the way that the straight jacket is positioned, it was positioned over one of the corners. So you have to climb up one of the turnbuckles to get it. So it was yeah. like a mix of an on a pole match in a right, right, right. Yeah. But it was still uh, honestly, this was one of the best match. This was the best match, I think. Oh on yeah. The card. Okay, to be honest, because again, yeah, well, you it's repetitive. It's kind of like The Rock and Triple H, back and forth on the main event. So we started yeah. to remember in two thousand. So now we're seeing Booker T and Scott Steiner. That was a problem with both companies at the time. Yes. Yes, yes. The Rock and HH, we saw repetitive one main events six times, bro. The only Backlash company that at the time, ECW was not doing repetitive main events. And no, it was like, Paul Heyman ECW. would always come out. He's like, 
we're doing what they're not doing, you know? Yeah, dude. And that, that was the main thing. And uh, that's why there was a lot of variety in, uh, in ECW, man. ECW, so they always switched props to, to that. Events, yeah. Always, man, always. Uh, whereas you had, you had WCW, WWE being repetitive, especially in 2000, man. Oh, a yeah. lot of the guys were injured and there was negotiation problems and shit like that, right? So, um, yeah, it was just natural. People yeah, got so lazy in 2000, bro. Like, Goldberg... not lazy. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, so, for sure. The Goldberg so. Steiner feud lasted till the end of WCW. Right. Because yeah. you had the two powerhouses fight. So, um, good match, honestly. Um, I think they had Michael Hoopla. Buffer was there. Yes, Michael Buffer was, it was huge as well. Um, but there wasn't much competition for that honor, really, in, in the match. You know, like, uh, we'll, we'll just say that. Again, it was both runner-ups, man. They were building Booker T, Scott Steiner. Uh, by the end, I think that was the last match on Nitro. Booker T and the yeah. last Nitro, the main event was on the Booker last T Nitro, yeah. and uh, Scott Steiner, man. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, like at this point, they had, like, they're trying to build new stars. You could tell that like they didn't know it was necessarily the end, right? Because you could tell no. that they're trying to build towards something. If yeah, something's yeah, yeah. already at the end, then you're going to like go over the best moments kind of thing. Like right. bring, maybe right. just like bring back guys. Like, true. you know, true. but it really felt like they were building towards something. So um, yeah, it is a pretty good match. Like um, I would say it's the best match on the show, like uh, in ring and storyline, like all For things sure. considered. Decent. Which is good. Your main event should be uh, your best match on the show. Steve Ray even got involved. He was getting yeah. he was rooting for his brother. He kept telling him to pin him on and not to put the jacket. Because, yeah, it just... Um, um, I really hated Steiner at the time. He was a real big heel. So, yeah. I think... I he remember seeing hair. this. He had to be so, yeah, yeah. He had to be heel with the blonde hair, bro. But I, I didn't like him as a heel then because I, he was doing his job properly. He was just so good and crazy. So, um, I was pretty sad um because he would i think he, he put him out uh, many times with the steiner recliner and it was always him and plus he just beat goldberg so um at the time he was a big villain and uh he was on his rise man for yeah. sure so how he wins he hits him with a hits him with a chair hits him with a full nelson slam where he's already knocked out and yeah, then already. he is already passed out in the steiner recliner Puts so him in the Steiner recliner, out. so it's this one. He just like he's TKO'd already. Exactly. So and he wins by TKO, strong, which know? is brutal. Yeah. You know, like that's brutal, dude. Like the guy's knocked out and then goes and applies a TKO on him, kind of like what he did to Goldberg. Uh, he put him in the pipe, I think, in the Steiner yeah. recliner. He hit him with it. So exactly. he was an animal at that time, bro. He was savage. And yeah, like um, I don't think Steiner drops the title too uh, he might keep the title the whole way till the end of wcw here yeah he does he keeps it dude he keeps it so i think vicious comes the back last at nitro some point. i think he does i think sid vicious comes back to run up for you to uh, at some point after this right i think that's the next pay-per-view that's the next pay-per-view so, so that's the end of this pay-per-view though yeah what steiner you, uh... hits so um sorry go on go on yeah what did you give this pay-per-view on 10 okay to be honest, I gave this one a five. Five, yeah. Five. I gave it a four. You gave it a four. Because, like, it was, bit, it was an improvement of the last pay-per-view, for sure. It was way better than the Nitro. I mean, that goes without saying. But, like you're saying, there were some okay matches, but it was kind of boring. It was and, boring. And, like, the storylines that they set up were predictable. And then the other things they set up, they just immediately went around it and didn't do that you know like the yeah. no interference so for sure so the cons for me were the blandness like you said um the overshowering again of just the same old hash of you know uh, new blood rising coming in almost every match flair being pointless by coming out and saying this is a great product and i shit you not no one's gonna come and interfere uh Disco Inferno's antics, like he was just, you know, uh, chronic, uh, just that ripoff. It feels like it's like the same things we've it's been seeing. It's such a ripoff. It's like a low-grade 
sucky movie, you know? You know how you have, like, the Avenged team? Like, you know how you have the straight-to-DVD movies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Off, like, the Avengers, they're, like, the Avengeful team. So yeah. it was just kind of like that from WWE. Good matches, yeah, you had Shane Douglas and, um, you know, being a good heel, uh, mediocre match with Ernest the Cat, uh, Buff Bagwell and uh, Jeff Jarrett, another mediocre, still good, not bad. And then you had that's the it. There was some okay matches the, here and there. Luger but... and Goldberg again. It was it. All all of them were like five on ten matches, six on ten, like in between five on six on ten. So and then the, no, but that's it. That's what I would have given it like a better grade. But then there was some stuff that like brought it down, like the man cow True. stuff, or, you know. Yeah, yeah, man cow got six, uh, like took six points automatically right away. No, no that's kidding, it. But, uh, like... um, it, it was just better than Halloween Havoc. Like it was more. Oh, yeah. I would I would say it's funny to say it was more structured because Halloween Havoc was just crap, bro. It was all over the place. It was really horrible. Um, Mayhem was a bit more structured, even though you had the run-ins. You had better. They booked the matches a bit better. Yeah, but the storylines like were weird. Too, it felt awkward. like they were all like, like some employees working at some place where you know, like they all know that like the boss yes. is an idiot. Like, yes, exactly. They're like, we're gonna take advantage of him. And uh, we're burnt like, out we're too. Just... Like, so we're... you know, you see that a lot in two thousand. Yeah. With an in WCW. So, now I understand. So that'll be it for Mayhem. So what we're gonna do? Because we don't want to leave the, the 2000 era too quickly because there's literally only one pay-per-view left in 2000. What we're going to do is for the next episodes, where we're going to review all the Nitros and then Starcade 2000. And then we're going to finish 2000. So we're going to review all, all the Nitros and and Starcade for the rest of 2000. Absolutely. So now we step into um, the PS2 era, even though it was in 99. This is where 2000 finishes, 2001 rises, and that's where GTA 3 came out and all the good shows and the movies and all those mysteriously, let's just say, um, nitros that await it was us. More, it was a change. Uh, it was a lot, uh, era, a lot, sure. dude. Everything changed from 2000 to 2001. Uh, a lot, man. The movies, everything. Like it took on the 2000, the opening, right of the of, of the millennium, and just shot it up in oomph because oh, yeah. you saw a drastic change in everything, man. Not only wrestling. Definitely. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know how good those episodes will be, but we're in for it here. Fans Mysterious. And... Yep. So follow along with us here on IndieQuebec.com. And um, that's it. We're going to be keeping doing all kinds of more episodes after that. But we're going to keep on that 2000s vibe coming up. So for the Stinger, I'm the Prez. And we will see you next week on the see Turner you Podcasting next week. Network guys